Did Kevin Smith lie about He-Man? Kinda. Does that mean the show's no good? No. Welcome to Popcorn Planet. I am Andy Signor, and Netflix just dropped the first five episodes of Kevin Smith's new Masters of the Universe Revelation. Now, look at this poster. This poster is glorious. Just like the, uh, the first trailer that came out, I was so pumped to see all this. It's just so metal. And the beginning of this series, which I will review, as well as break down this Kevin Smith controversy that's all over YouTube today, uh, the first little bit of this ep that first episode is so epic. It's like the toys come alive and this, these amazing canvas paintings that I, I I think I just that's where a lot of the, my complaints are going to come if I just want a little bit more of that before we got to what he gave us now before I get to my full review more than that let, let's break down what happened now he man I, I was a fan but let's be honest the show in the 80s it's really cheesy it doesn't hold up as, a, as an adult there's Prince Adam and he man himself are so silly and oh, 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 oh. it's so over the top ridiculous 80sness but as a kid I loved it I played with the figures this was a glorified toy commercial every week I loved seeing the new figures I have show up in the episodes it was a lot of fun as a kid I loved it uh, does it hold up today no but they did reboot it and I think a lot of people from my era forget that in 2002 they did he man the masters of the universe which is another series series uh which had some cool art and that's a lot of people's versions of he-man which wasn't that long ago 20 i guess well 20 years ago damn i'm old uh <laughs> but uh here's just to prove there i am playing with my he-man figures uh, i made a whole video about me okay, uh, me and my brother uh, no. as i'm playing with all my he-man characters fisto uh you can click up there i'll put it in the uh, top corner if you want to watch my he-man as a kid video it's very fun uh learn a bit more about me uh i, I just share that because yes i was a he-man fan okay i played with my he-man this is the one i lost uh battle cat's armor if anybody has an extra head armor please let me know uh, his belt broke. His his head is clearly a bit chewed on. Has lost some coloring. But man, this toy got played with, and I still have it. It's one of my favorite things back there because He Man was my first big toy cartoon thing that I was really obsessed with. I collected all of them. I loved it. So I was really excited when I saw this show because it felt like they were going to really go back to the roots. Uh, but if you're online right now, you'll see a lot of people just mad because they're all saying they exposed Kevin Smith's a liar, uh, the full he ma'am, uh, goes full woke, gotcha, you lied to us worse than we thought, I lied, just he man destroyed, oh my gosh, busted, a lot of people just taking him down, and I, I wanted to react and look at all this fairly, step back from all this. What is this controversy? Before I get to my review, let's make sure you know all the stuff because it's gonna, it sort of affects my review. I wanna put all this in context. All right, so the, the complaint that a lot of people had, and this was broken by Clownfish TV on Twitter, uh, was that the show wasn't about He-Man, it was gonna be about Tila. It was gonna become the Tila show. And yes, that is true in a way, but I'll come back to that. Let's break down what Kevin said, okay? So Clownfish put this out. Clownfish, let me, sorry, I have, my understanding is that Kevin Smith's He-Man series from an alleged insider, Tila is a better He-Man than Adam, and he steps aside to let her and her girlfriend take over hero duties. If true, uh, won't this won't play well. Now, that's not technically true, Clownfish, this part here. Uh, when He-Man, I gotta be careful of spoiler points. I'll get to that later. We'll break down the specifics of it, but not exactly true. Uh, and so and Kevin responded at that point, as a showrunner, I could have really used these story suggestions, being that it won't play well, before we locked the scripts. However, no, He-Man does no stepping aside, and Tila has no girlfriend in our show. The storyline is pretty dark and way metal. Before Revelation, we were calling it End of Universe. Now, it's true. It's darker, and uh, I, the End of Universe would make sense. Uh, He-Man doesn't step aside. I think that's, he's, this isn't a lie. He-Man makes a choice to save Eternia in the first episode. And then the plot sort of is what happens to everybody if He-Man is no longer there. That's really what this show is about. Now, does that mean He-Man's gone? Come on, guys. Of course He-Man's going to come back. Now, did, does he come back? How is he come back? I'm not, I'm not even going to tell you if he does in these five episodes, but come on, guys. It's still a kid's show. Uh, but what's really interesting to me about this, Kevin, I don't know. Tila has no girlfriend in our show. Who's Andrew then? They're, they're huggy. They're, she's a friend. No, she's a girl. Are you just like, she is not gay. Don't you dare. <laughs> it's, very, it's very strange to me how aggressive he's like, no, Tila's no girlfriend in our show. 
Uh, so I guess they're not that progressive. <laughs> it seemed like it. There's a couple shots where they're very like chummy and they seem like wherever I go. I mean, I guess they're just good friends, but not girlfriends. Uh, <laughs> according to Kevin. Uh, anyway, I, did, I just found that funny that he was that he was that adamant to, to call out the fact. No, they are not girlfriends. <laughs> That was weird. Uh, with all due respect, Screen Ran, I've read, uh, I, I've read every master script for our shows, plus wrote a few, viewed four amazing animatics. While Tila is as present as she's always been in the Masters Universe adventures, and she plays a big role, our series is literally all about He-Man. Now, this is where I think Kevin did lie a bit. Kevin, the show, the first five episodes at least, the optics of what we're seeing, our first taste of this show you've made, it's about Tila, man. It is. Now, I got feelings on that and we're going to get there. But uh, why did you poke these bears? Like, why did you, you just keep engaging? Like, I don't get it. There was no need to do... I guess you were trying to, like, stop the... the put your, you know, stop from the, pe the haters from hating. But, dude, all you did was give them more power and, and fed it even further. They're all so excited to prove that you were wrong. Uh, the lesson here is just don't, just don't engage. Let the show speak for itself. And then you can explain it later. Uh, but I don't know. I, I do think, yeah, you, Kevin, this looks stupid. It is about Tila. It's totally about Tila. Well, at least the first five episodes. Now, the show may change. We haven't seen the whole series, right? He may have been speaking as a whole series run, and that way he doesn't think he's lying and he did no wrong. Uh, but that's where this all came from. And then a lot of people were saying, oh, you were just mean and da da da. And this, sorry, he was like uh, saying all these things here uh, about. Uh, uh, I don't see why I bashed or belittled anyone. I thought I was extremely good natured. I mean, you're 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 being a little condescending, uh, and then you're trying to play it safe, uh, and then you're going here talking about yeah. See, there's no figures of Tila. See, you're you're trying to downplay the connection of her, even though maybe it wasn't your choice to re there were at least the first five, and so that's where you were confused. Maybe that would have been a better explanation. And I think all of this just could have been summed up if you had just been careful and said, look, the show is about. And I think this is, this is where I'm going to turn to my review now. The show is about what if Skeletor finally one-ups He-Man? What happens to the Masters of the Universe after that? And honestly, I like that. So I guess I'm going to be in the minority here, and people are going to say, oh, of course Andy's shilling out for Kevin Smith. No, I feel like I just called him out. I did. But now, all that said, who cares if Tila's there? Who cares? The show's Masters of the Universe. It really is called that. Now, was it annoying that He-Man's not front and center? Yeah, I'll be honest. I think it was a mistake of the show to not start with He-Man, show us some Skeletor He-Man battles, give us a few episodes of the, the remind us of how fun that back and forth is, and then do this new adjustment that you're doing. I think that would have been a smarter move. But let me break this down in pros and cons. Uh, the animation, pros, animation, gorgeous. Gorgeous, guys. It looks fantastic. The whole series looks great. So nice to have these characters back in. Uh, so many characters pop in. I mean, it starts uh, uh, with, uh, 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 I wrote it down, a Clawful and Spike Orr there in the beginning. So right out the gate, you're like, bam, we're really getting all the characters in this show. Stink Orr shows up. Uh, Moss Man, dude, Merman. It's all, so many characters show up in the show, and I thought it was brilliant the way they did that. Uh, and it really opens up the world, I think, even more. It was really fun to see. Uh, the voice talent in this, they're stellar, guys. Davos as Man at Arms. Liam Cunningham is so good as Man at Arms to hear his voice. Uh, and Lena Headley as Evil Lynn. I didn't feel I didn't feel like it was all Game of Thrones, but just a little bit of it, where it's like it just creates a little bit of seriousness to it that I think the show needed. To be perfectly honest, uh, the show needed that little seriousness because the show's so silly. The original show is so silly. Uh, so I thought Lena Headley and Davos, my man, they are so great. And Mark Hamill as Skeletor, uh, who's not in the home. Everyone's complaining. There's no He-Man. There's no Skeletor either. They take the they take the two adversaries out, you know, and, and sort of open up like, well, here's what the world would do without these two. Uh, and what that does is it adds stakes. Uh, and I actually kind of liked it. They, they do kill some characters off. Everyone's spoiling it all over the internet and in YouTube titles, which is why, why are we? God, it's so sad where we've come to. Blank dies in episode five as a title of a video that was done before anyone had a chance to see the show. <laughs> Because they're just, they want the show to fail. And I think that's where we're so misguided. I don't understand it. At least do a spoiler warning before you do it. Uh, but. Uh, what's so cool is that the, they, they, by adding these stakes and changing it up, like they do something cool. It's another amazing voice talent. Henry Rollins as Triclops is so cool. He ends up 
uh, taking over because now magic is gone from Eternia, and so he takes technology over and starts turning people into cyborgs and stuff, uh, and embraces embraces like this sort of tech cult to sort of stop all magic and lead and say Skeletor didn't know what he was doing. It's kind of fascinating and cool to see all these you know side characters that were always there sort of step up and create the big war of why it wasn't just Skeletor, it was everybody. There was, there were, everybody was vying for the throne, the mass to be master of the universe. Uh, and so I think it was clever to sort of let us see all these side characters uh, and uh, have these stakes. But then going back to now to the cons, I didn't get enough He-Man up, up, up front. And I think that was a big mistake. The fact that we don't, he's barely in it, guys, at least in these first five, it is a fair criticism for a lot of people to have. Um, if they had just given us one big battle of He-Man and Skeletor, and then, ha-ha, I got you, Skeletor, and then uh, it was a trick or something, I think it would have helped. You, they start with these amazing uh, screen sh shots in the beginning, credits that are just unreal, and then to not get a little bit of that, like one epic beginning was a little bit of a frustration, i got to admit. Uh, and to not have He-Man and Skeletor there more often was, was frustrating. They pop up in flashbacks and some plot points you'll see, but they're not, they're, they are definitely supporting... That's being that's being generous. They are supporting characters. Uh, now the other con, Tila. <laughs> Tila sucks. Okay, and it's not because she's a woman. I don't care that she's leading and all the women are taking charge. She sucks because she's so annoying. She's so whiny and bratty. She's voiced by Sarah Michelle Gellar, who I typically like. I loved Buffy. Huge fan of her. But my God, she's so annoying. She's got so much attitude in the read and the way she's written, and she's so tough. It just makes her very unlikable. And the closest comparison I can think of is Korra, The Legend of Korra. Now, I love The Last Airbender, and I actually did enjoy The Legend of Korra. There's a lot in there that actually works, but it's very hit or miss at times. And Korra, as a main character, there's just so many times you're like, girl, why are you so stupid and being annoying? Like, you're the airbender. Like, you're the, you're, the, you're the avatar. Like, what are you doing? She's so it's down herself and everything. And so Tila does, it's, it's just more of an attitude. It's like beginning of uh, Korra season one is what I felt like Tila was. And so it's just very off-putting. She's very sad because she didn't know that Prince Adam, her friend, was He-Man. And she gets so pissed about it. She can't let it go. And then the whole universe is at stake. But she's like, why didn't you tell me? Oh, it's just so... It's so overly badly done. It's not done in like a hurt way where like she's hurt and betrayed. It's done in a bratty way, which to me is where they failed in the script writing. It, it, to lead with her, I would have been fine with it, but not as leading as a brat. And I'm, I'm, I'm frustrated because we're so focused on, oh, it's T ma'am, it's T, T da, da, da. No, it's, it sucks because she's just written poorly. For me, that's, that's where things really lose their way a bit. Um, and so, uh, look, she's a badass warrior, but I can't focus on because I'm so annoyed by sort of her, her choices as a character. Uh, so, look, overall, though, e Evil Lynn, I think, is great. They sort of have to work together because that's sort of the world we're in now where magic's gone and the whole thing's going to die if they don't figure out how to bring the sword back together is sort of the premise. And so a lot of the, the side characters go on this adventure, which Tila does go and seemingly lead. Uh, but... All this criticism of it, it's the Tila show, it's the Tila show. That's not the problem. The problem is Tila is not well written. I do not like Tila, and it, it does suck that we don't get more He-Man and Skeletor, I'll be honest. Five episodes in, I'm like, all right, what, what's taking so long? We need to get it. Now, I liked how the show ended. The show ends and does something different that we haven't seen. Again, stakes. I'll be interested to see if they keep these stakes. But I, I'm into it. I like that they're doing something new. If, we, if you go back and rewatch the old show, guys, He-Man beats Skeletor every episode. He-Man beats Skeletor. Uh, da, 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 da. I'll curse you, He-Man. I'll get you next week. And it's just so repetitive. So why did Kevin Smith do that? Well, he actually answered it. Ironically, while making fun of Screen Rant, uh, he, he showed up to talk to Screen Rant here, uh, and, and he explained something that I wanted to share with you guys. Revelation in the title, Masters of the Universe, Revelation refers to Tila's journey, basically admitting... <laughs> what he said wasn't true. He's admitting here. Let's be fair. That definitely seems seems silly, Kevin, here. Uh, Tila finds something out about her that was hinted at the, in the old Legacy show, and that's a kernel that we blew out and really played with in the show. The revelation in question really has to do with Tila, and that 
that's because if you remember the old show, the very beginning, they would talk about only three know the secret. And it was like the sorceress, man at arms, and Orko, as well as Cringer, Tila, and who fought He Man with side by side. And Tila, who protected Adam when he wasn't He Man, was always left out of that. She was kept in the dark like Lois Lane. So our approach for the story was like, what happens if she finds out? What happens when she learns who He Man really is? And what if she learned that not from him confessing, if it wasn't him going, you know, what I, what I think you can handle this? It was uh, by way of adventure of this epic, something happened that kind of breaks everybody's world and all the revelations are revealed. Now, there's another revelation. I don't know if anybody knows this. If you go back and actually watch the show... Your daughter has grown into a remarkable woman. Yes, I miss her deeply. I live for the day I can tell her that I am her mother. <gasps> what? <laughs> so, guys, look. The show is crazy. And, yeah, the show. she was Sorceress's sister in the show. Of course she's an important character. Why are we, who cares if she's the lead? We should be mad that she's written bratty. That's why we should be mad. She's written poorly. I'm so frustrated that we're so annoyed that she's the lead. Guys, it's Masters of the Universe. There's, we're allowed to have women in the show. And it's interesting to have He-Man take, to defend and move on to the powers of Skull and see what happens. But he thinks he does this great sacrifice, but ultimately he didn't save anything. And so all these, there's still a lot of threats, and is the world going to die? And then there's a question that, you know, uh, there's clearly a story here that I'm interested in. I, I don't think the story's bad. I think the character was written poorly, and that sucks. And, it, and it's sad to not get the He-Man Skeletor fight at least a little bit f er, f early so we could have had that. Like, oh, I can't wait till he comes back. It's, it's that, that, to me, are the two biggest mistakes of the show. Overall, though, yeah, I enjoyed it. I, I hate it. It's fun to see these characters back. It's definitely a nostalgia fest. There's definitely some nostalgia in me that's giving it more, I think, liking it more than probably if I just randomly happened upon this show. Uh, but overall, Revelation, I'm, in, I'm interested to see what, what happens. So, look, some of you aren't going to like Kevin Smith. Some of you aren't going to like that Tila's the lead. That's your right. That's your choice. But just know the full story. I feel like there's more to this. Uh, I think we're being a little hard on Kevin. At the same time, I think, Kevin, you did F up. You should have just not engaged. It is Tila's journey. You admitted that. It's not the He-Man show for the first five episodes, and that's going to piss off some fans. So uh, you could have avoided all this by just not engaging with people out there spreading early rumors about your show. Just let the show come out and then defend it. Uh, and then you would not have been hit on so hard in all the YouTube videos. So, uh, But it is what it is. Uh, that's how it works. What do you guys think of all this? I'd love for you to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Uh, make sure to smash the bell as well as the like button and then leave your comments on this. Did you watch it? Were you annoyed? Did you hate Tila as well? Was it because she was a girl or was it because she was just an annoying bratty character? Be honest in the comments down below. Let me know your thoughts. Stay tuned for more here on Popcorn Planet. See, there's stuff other than Britney Spears here.